Hey, this is Don DeRosa. I'm sitting in here in traffic and I thought, well, maybe I'll give you another video blog. We had a question just the other day about negotiations. Um, and the question really was, what's important in a negotiation? What should I be really focusing on? And to be quite honest with you, the most important thing to focus on is really your listening skills. If, you, if I could teach you anything at all about negotiations, probably the number one thing would be, well, there's three critical elements, time, information, and power that you need to be aware of. But this more falls into the information phase of listening. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, if you're like me, I have a tendency to talk with my hands and my hands move, and I have a tendency to not really listen, but talk or I'm more interested in what I'm saying than what other people are saying to me. So what I would tell you is learn to be a very good listener. Like for me, for example, I, when I go to talk to someone, I have to actually sit on my hands because otherwise my hands go and I, my mouth goes with them. So becoming an effective listener is probably the most important thing you can do. Now I've written down 10, 10 what I would consider the most successful, and here it is. Let's go through this. Number one, look at the speaker. Basically what I'm saying is show genuine interest in who it is you're talking with. If you try to fake it, it's going to come across that way. So when you're negotiating with someone, show some general interest in what they're saying, such as you want to lean in, uh, you never want to cross your arms, you never want to turn away from them, you always want to turn into them and, you know, look at them. Number two, don't interrupt. One of the most important things is don't interrupt someone when they're talking to you. Um, have you ever had a conversation with someone and you have a tendency to butt in right in the middle of what they're saying and they get frustrated? Well, when you're negotiating, that breaks the negotiation. I got a lot of people here staring at me like, what the heck is this guy doing? So they, it breaks the concentration and it breaks the negotiating um, flow, if you will. So never, ever, ever interrupt them. Let them talk. Number three, focus on understanding. I always use, you know, you have to have empathy and you have to say, you know what, I understand your situation. Even if you totally disagree with your under, your, their point of view, you still have to understand their point of view. I understand where you're coming from, but here's why I can't agree with you or here's why we have a difference of opinions. I get it, I understand, but here's why it's different. Number four. Determine the need at the moment. You have to become into, you have to become a, what I would call an interrogator, if you will, to use a negative word. You have to ask open-ended questions, and you have to find out what their needs are. Not so much what their wants are, but what do they really need. That's important because that's really when you start talking about negotiations that's really what makes the difference is if you can meet some or all of their needs because originally they're going to come at you with all their wants but if you can come up with some of their you know you know hit your hit their needs you have a much better much greater ability to be successful than if you are trying to hit their wants um, so let's see number five check your emotion I see this a lot, especially with short sales, when you start talking to a loss mitigation agent, or you're talking to someone that doesn't like what you have to say, they have a tendency to get emotional. And you never want to get emotional. I ha usually when I give this presentation, I have a little slide of a kid screaming at a, a, a donkey, and I say, never argue with a jackass. Because it's true, you never want to, in a negotiation, you never want to argue. So don't let your emotions, never let them see you sweat. You can come up with all these cliches, but never let them be, you know, never put yourself in an emotional situation. So number six, suspend your judgment on them. Now what I mean by suspending your judgment is don't look down at someone because they're in a foreclosure situation or because they're going through a divorce or whatever their situation is. Don't look down on them. Don't be negative. Um, don't be judgmental because that will come across because I tell people all the time 
every single, if you're dealing with foreclosures, it's just not a, I mean, every single one of us out there is only one hardship away from being in the same position. If the hardship's big enough, we can all be right where they are. Don't kid yourself. Um, number eight, sum up at intervals. What do I mean by summing up at intervals? So as you're talking, as you're having a conversation and building rapport with that person, you want to on occasion go, so let me understand where we are. That if I can get you $5,000 and I can close by next Friday, if that's what, you know, if I'm, am I hearing you, if, is that what I'm hearing? Uh, if I can get you that money by next Friday, you'll sell me this house? That's summing up and what that does is that gives them the ability, that, that makes them understand that you're listening to them and that you're hearing what they're having to say. So that gives them confidence in you as well. Um, number nine, ask questions for clarification. Um, very important. I always go, so let me understand what you just said to me. You are now running on reserve. So let me understand what, you, what you're saying to me is if I get you the $5,000 by Friday, you'll sell me this house. Is that, is that correct? Man, I got stuff going off everywhere. Uh, and number 10, always make listening your priority. Um, people like to do business with people they like. And as long as you're listening and hearing what they have to say, you can come up with creative solutions but if you're the one talking and you're not listening, you know, chances are you're going to miss something. So do yourself a favor and listen because at some point you're going to pick something up. You're going to pick up good, some good nugget of information that you can utilize in your negotiations and make it a win-win across the board. So hopefully, you know, the, one of the most important things that you can do is listen. So please understand if you haven't taken notes on this, go back, listen to it again, take some notes and make sure you apply what I told you or what I've just given you and it really will make a difference. I'd like to know what your comments are on these so if you would like please leave a comment at the bottom and I'll be happy to, to, to write back but I really would like to know what you think so please leave your comment at the bottom. Also, if you have any questions at all that you'd like me to answer on any general topic of real estate, please enter that at the bottom as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.